Hello friends, welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this. Pretty cool. Part 2 of my other video, how to make an aura, finally, after like of a year. Now this video is really really simple and I'm gonna explain all the concepts very thoroughly. So to start off we're just gonna set everything we need. I like to set the stage as I call it before I begin work. So what we're gonna need is three folders in replicated storage like so and then for each of these folders we're gonna like call them something different they're gonna each store something so the first one's gonna be module the second one's gonna be remote and the third one is gonna be called visual effects and then for the remotes i'm just gonna add two remotes to it and i'm gonna name them something i usually like to name everything very like so their name explains what they do slide for shadow in here wink wink And now the modules, I'm going to be using FenMod, I'm going to explain more about that later in the video, but you can find it in the description. And for the visual effects, it's going to be the aura, which I show you how to make in this video. Check it out at the end of this video if you're interested. If not, it's in the link in the description and it's slightly different, so it looks better when we activate it. Just did some slight tweaking. Looks like this. In replicated storage you should have three folders one called modules with fen mod in it the second one remotes with two remotes and the third one visual effects without visual effects now you technically don't need to have folders for all these but it's a good habit to have especially when you start making more complicated larger things so in service script service we're gonna add a folder call it aura and add a script on that, that folder and call that script aura handler and in startup player startup player scripts well we're gonna add a local script no my bad we're gonna add a folder name that aura2 and put the local script in that folder and we're gonna name that something like our ability. When we're programming, we really want every single aspect of our code to be clear and easy to understand because we could come back two years from now and we might want to know what the heck is happening here. So it's a really good habit to have. So now it should look something like this. Don't worry if you have no clue what any of these are. So I'm going to explain what they do and why we added them as we go through the video. So I'm just going to explain how the R ability works. It's very, very simple. I was looking through the code this morning and I was like, wow, it couldn't be more simple. So this local script, R ability, checks when the player clicks a key like E. When the player clicks a key, it says, guys, it's activated the R and sends it through a remote event to this guy which then sends it to the aura handler and then the aura handler is like oh my god guys he activated the ability turn an aura and then the aura activates using this and if the player presses that same key again boom it goes oh my god he deactivated bing bong to aura handler and then the aura handler deactivates it so let's start so we're going to be starting with aura ability there are three ways to go about this like key buying type ability thing and i'm gonna show them from the one i never use to my favorite one which i always use so first is the one i never use
Okay, so I get I got ahead of myself there. So we got the references, we got the player and the mouse. And next, we just do mouse or key down, click connect. And every time a key is pressed, it tells us which key that is. So if we print key, you see, I'm gonna click F, prints F. I'm gonna click E, prints E. Now we want the ability to activate only when we press E. So I'm gonna go. If the key we pressed is an E, then do nothing. And of course it's small letters. I don't know why. This gave me so many errors and I finally figured out it was a small letter. And I'm also putting this in brackets because if I don't, it sounds like if not key, comma equal equal e which makes no sense but what we're really trying to say is if not this equals truth then return end if we print e pressed it should only print e when we press e <laughs> so guys it is very important to frequently test your code so you don't get like a massive error and don't know where to go and also to make sure the code works along the way so in this video we're going to constantly regularly test our code e pressed i pressed e now let me press f nothing happens it works woohoo it's often common that you get errors so if you do just fix it just Try your best, you got this. So now we know if the player is pressing E, what we want now. So that's our first technique. The second technique is what everyone recommends you should do. I recommend you should do it. The pros recommend you should do it. It's just good form. It's more versatile. It's just better. So don't use this guys. I was just showing you different ways. Our second way is drum roll please user input service i know you all expected it coming so i'm just gonna get the things i need and i'm gonna show you how it's done i don't know what else i need okay and guys i've been really trying to name all my variables in full names it's good practice, it kind of sucks in the moment, but it allows your code to be easily read in the future, which is key. So do that if you think it's best. Now user input service is so Big. I couldn't possibly cover all the things it can do in this video, but there are beautiful documentaries on it. We're gonna just do input begin. This is an event that fires when a player presses a key, so input began. It can be any key, that's why it's so beautiful. It can literally be any key. It could be mouse button 5, it could be like F3, it could be shift, it's absolutely gorgeous. And is typing is just if the player is in chat. So I'm just gonna return if it's typing so we don't want the abilities to fire while the player is like typing in the chat. That would be wonky. So if is typing, then return end. And now we check if the player is pressing the E key. And if they're not, we just return. So we only want to continue if the player is pressing the E key. And we do this by going if input. Okay, so if not input equal to enum.keycode.e, that is why I was very confused. I always use user input service and it's always caps, so. If not, if we're not pressing the E key, then do nothing. But if we are, then print E pressed. I usually like to make my code very spacious and easy to understand because it's just better for me. So let's test this out to see if it works. 
I know it works. So I'm gonna press F. Nothing. I'm gonna press E. Moment of truth. Drum roll. Nothing? What? Okay, I seem to have made a mistake. If not, input equal equal e number key code then e number ten and oh okay did you spot the mistake it's been a while since i've used this i usually use the third method which i'll show you soon it's input the key code i kind of want to read more into user input service now i'm wondering what input is So I'm gonna press F, moment of truth. Nothing happens. Drum roll. Now I press E. Oh, <gasps> E pressed. Oh my God. <laughs> so that is the second method. And you know, just for this method, I'll show you how to add a cooldown because in the third method, you don't need to. That's the beauty of it. Okay, so for the third method, I'm just gonna go local D bounce equals false local oh yeah equals 0.5 so now we have our two thingies so you know what let's say we don't want this to fire if debounce is true because if debounce you know I should use better words better words cool down on cooldown cooldown time okay this should be easy to understand now we don't want the ability to fire if the player is on cooldown like if the ability is on cooldown so we're gonna be like if on cooldown then do nothing if not keep going on cooldown equals true and then we delay Okay, so pff, brother. Okay, so what's happening here? So let's read the code like it's English. We get user input service, so we can use it later. And we get our variables and stuff, so we start here. If the player is typing while they're pressing a key, do nothing. If the player clicks a key that is an E, do nothing. If the player's ability is on cooldown, do nothing. If all of those aren't true and the player clicks the right key and is not typing, then cooldown. Then the players activate the ability, so we a activate the cooldown. And right after we activate the cooldown, we use something called delay. God bless delay. It's beautiful. I just recently figured out about it. So it delays for this time to run this function. So it completely skips over it. So if we say delay two seconds, then print E, it would go like this. Print E. And in this own thing, after two, two seconds, it'll do whatever it's in this function. Before, I would use spawn function, which just does the exact same thing, but more work. Then I'll go wait, cooldown time. But luckily, I found this baby. So now we should technically have a cooldown of two seconds, just so it's visible. So I'm gonna spam E now. I don't know if you guys can hear me smashing my keyboard, but as you can see, it has a cooldown now. Absolutely beautiful. Now the third method, my favorite method, is we use my module. Now this module was designed for me and all others who make abilities for a living and are sick of repeating the same thing 
200 times a day. So if you're not sick of using user input service like this, I suggest you keep using it. It's better form, helps cement your understanding. But if you have good enough understanding to the level you're sick of seeing user input service on your screen, then FanMod is the thing for you. Now, I'm not quite sure how people feel about FanMod or if it even works for them. So I would love to hear about it in the comments. So first, we're just gonna get fan mode. You'd be surprised how easy this is, just watch. We're gonna get fan mode. Now, we require this because it's like a module. If you don't quite understand modules, I suggest you watch a tutorial on it. No, I don't have a tutorial on it, sadly, but there are many, many beautiful tutorials that explain this in depth. So now we've gotten fan mode. Now, what exactly is fan mode? Well, fan mode is a collection of things that are regularly used, or I regularly use, and I'm sick of repeating. So let's go through it. We got tween, key press, apply force, apply B gyro. Okay, I made this a year ago, so half of this might be depreciated and a little glitchy. Like, if you try to find glitches in it, you will, but if you just use it as it should be, you wouldn't. So we got apply gyro, which is now depreciated, apply force, which is now depreciated. It's only been a year of Roblox mouse to like hold so if you're holding down a key that is my favorite one because it takes so many lines to script but in like two lines you can just do it here found a list also a personal favorite shoot ray just shoots array i haven't used in a long time create part the only reason create part is here is for the lightning so lightning apply burst create beam which is a good one an m1 also a personal favorite an m2 second personal favorite get the gel no okay but the one we're going to be using today is key press. Now, as you can see, after you've done key press, there's a beautiful selection that literally shows you how to use it. So the first parameter is the key you want to check for in single quotations. So our key is E. The second parameter is the cooldown. And if you're in a rush and you don't care about cooldown, you can go nil and then the cooldown would automatically be 0.1 seconds but if you like a more specific you can go hmm two second cooldown literally we've done so much with two two moves of our fingers and the third parameter is the function that would be fired if the key pressed is e so we'll go local function e pressed print OMG E got pressed. And then we just put E pressed here without the brackets. <coughs> now I'm a little sick, but don't worry about it. So, okay. First of all, let's take a second to admire the simplicity of this. In four lines, you've done everything that would have taken you like 20 lines. So let's test it to see if it really works or if it functions. Fan mod in the description, by the way. I'm gonna spam F. Nothing happens. Do I have a cooldown for E? Beautiful. I'm gonna spam E. As you can see, it works exactly like the user input service. Why? Because it is exactly the user input service. I'll show you. As you can see, we're just doing the exact same thing here, but we don't have to rewrite it. Now I've shown you my favorite way. Next thing we have to do, next thing we get to do, is basically tell this script whether to activate the ability, it's been annoying me, whether to activate the ability or not. So if the player presses E and the ability isn't activated, then we just say 
activate ability to this script. If the player presses E and the ability is activated, then we just say deactivate the ability. For safety reasons, a local script cannot directly communicate to a service script. It's like COVID all over again. But I'm kidding. Don't cancel me, please. But Roblox has been very nice. It gave us something called remote events. Now, remote events are the best things in the world. You're going to use them lots. They're like a phone. They allow us to have these two things communicate with each other. So I'm just going to get the remote and we're going to use activate our remote. So now we have the remote. All we need to do is send the message. So easy. So first of all, how do we like know what to send? It's a good question. That was a very, very good question. I wish I could end. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but this is how we're going to do it. So we already said what we want to do. Now coding is a lot like speaking English, but easier. I know a lot of you disagree with me, but, <laughs> but we essentially want to go if, okay, we need to create another variable here local activatability equals false. So if this is true, it just means we should activate the ability. If it's false, it means we shouldn't activate the ability. Or we should, no, we strike that. If it's true, it means activatability. If it's false, it means deactivatability. So if activatability, then activate wait if activate ability so if the ability is not activated then we activate the ability did i spell this wrong no i just spelled every other thing wrong wow activate activate else If the ability, you know, we're gonna go to all the unnecessary lengths here. If the ability is activated, do we add a den? The ability is activated, apparently we do. If the ability is activated, then deactivate the ability. So we're gonna print activate ability this is already burning my eyes guys ah that is better so now our desired result which is always good to think about before you test so you know where you went wrong is if we press e for the first time nothing's activated right it prints true if we press e again it prints false if we press E again, it prints true. So let's look at the output. I'm gonna start spamming E as usual. God help my E key. Oh, true. False, yes, come on, true, one more time. Yes, we did it, boys, we did it. Boys and girls, we did it. So it works. Now I know a couple of you are looking at me and going, Josh, what is this? Please help it. Don't I will. There's a much easier way to write this and not five lines of code. This is a lifesaver, so pay very close attention. So we could just go activate ability. Wait for it, wait for it. Equals not activate ability. I want you to take a second to admire the simplicity of this. Now, you must be... Okay, first of all, I want to convince you this actually works for I explain to you why it works. Spamming the E key again. Oh my god, it works. It's a miracle. It's almost like I had that planned the entire time. Okay, shift that. Why does this work and why does any of this make sense? 
or the universe could be a lie, but this isn't. So, activate ability, we just set the activate ability to anything, to the thing it's not. It's beautiful. So if the activate ability is true, so the ability is activated, and we press E, we just set it to its opposite, false. I don't think this works for numbers, but it works perfectly fine for booleans, which are true or false, I think. So boom, we have it send in the right information. All we have to do is just send it to this guy, our handler, and have him read it. So we're going to fire the server for the remote, and we're just going to fire activate ability. Beautiful, I spelled it right. First of all, we're done for this first part of the script. So we're going to have two scripts, wink, wink, special surprise at the end. We're going to have two scripts. The first script, the local script, is done. Admire this. It's beautiful. What is this? Like less than 10 lines of code. And now we're going to close this bad boy. We're never going to see you again. Bye bye. And I want you to take a moment to applaud yourself. Half of the work is done. See how easy that was? Okay, this other half. First, we wanna just get all the things we need. So now we've gotten everything we need. So now we're just gonna check to see if the remote event was fired. Cause that tells us whether we should activate or deactivate the ability. For remote events, the first fun the first parameter of the function is always player, and the second parameter is what you send to it. This got me absolutely stuck as a beginner, so remember that first parameter is always player. Don't let this deceive you. So now we're just gonna print activate R and test. Remember regular testing. Cross our fingers, I hope this works. Okay, I'm gonna spam the E key again. E key, are you ready? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Oh my god, ladies and gentlemen, we did it. We conquered Mars. I mean, we made the E key work, the same thing. So now we officially have a way to find out if we should activate or deactivate the R. So this is my favorite thing. I always just start this immediately, even though I don't need it. But I'm gonna get the character from the player. So the player is the player who fired the remote, so the player using the ability. So we're gonna get the character. You know what, actually, we need a couple more things. So we're gonna do one thing next, which is activate the R if we should activate it, and deactivate it if we shouldn't. We're gonna need a couple things for that. The first one, is the visual effects. Oh yes. Just gonna make sure the aura, just so we don't do it in script, is anchored, can collide, and massless just for funsies. The second thing we need is the humanoid root part. And I'll explain why in a second. You know, I write everything in full letters now, but not the humanoid root part and the humanoid. They still just stay root part for me. But first, I forgot to get the character. So now we have the character and root part. Okay, what's the game plan you may ask? It's very, very simple. We summon the aura, boom. You know, let's see, let's summon the aura. Okay, this is very misleading. Let's call you visual effects. Let's call you, so now we can go visual effects. But aura, colon clone. We're cloning it because we only have one aura for like 60 players using the ability multiple times. So we just clone it. It's my favorite function. Okay, the next thing we do is put the aura 
in workspace because anything not in workspace cannot be seen like if we play this right now press e nothing happens why because the aura doesn't exist as far as we're concerned so we parent that to workspace and boom so now it should get summoned oh look at that it gets summoned but two things it doesn't get summoned in the place we want it to be which is our character and it doesn't follow us so let's fix that yeah how do we fix that you may ask by using our trusty trusty friend world constraints now if life could be any easier world constraint made it so so it's so easy it brings me to tears every time i see this i really optimize this for you guys there's no part two Okay, now, what exactly is happening here? Easy, we created the world constraint using instant and new, parented it to the aura, second parameter is the parent, first parameter is what we want to create. We kept its part one to aura and part zero to root part. It doesn't matter which is which, you can have it like this if you want it. It doesn't matter for what we're doing. I'm not too well versed in worlds if you want to learn more so many documentations it's beautiful they just join them in place and guess what it also sets the position for us let's test it to see if it works ready we're ready to blast off e nothing happened oh my god i figured out our mistake guys now i don't know if you could tell i pressed e it got summoned in the wrong place first problem second problem i couldn't move at all and this is very simple it's because the aura is welded is anchored so it can't follow us around it can't even move so we're gonna set anchored to false are you ready for takeoff blast enough to the moon what do you were supposed to set the position? Oh, okay. I made a slight oopsie, guys. The world constraint does not set the position immediately. It just welds both in place. So what we get to do, get to, is set the R position to the root put position before we weld them. So we can go are the position equals root part dot position now if you've noticed my script is very spacious i'm trying very hard to make this easy to understand so let's test ready to blast off three two one e oh ohm oh Oh my god, it works. So cool. Look at this, guys. Progress. I'm so proud of us. Now, if you notice, it's a bit high. So how about we just set that a bit lower by maybe two studs. You know, let's use plus just for funsies. Let me set it lower by two studs. Now, let's see how that looks. Now, a lot of coding is just testing things over and over to make sure they look good. It's a really, really fun process, guys. Oh my god, look at this. Oh yes, it's beautiful. Can anything be more beautiful? I don't know. Okay, now that is perfect. But if you notice, if we press... Okay, before we continue, give yourself a round of applause. This is literally the aura, guys. You've you've got so far. I'm proud of you guys. I hope you're proud of yourself. You've done it, guys. 
But there's still more. There's still more work we get to do. There's still more fun to be hard. If we press E again, the aura doesn't disappear. It only gets more intense. E, 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 E. Like a certain character we know shouting. Ah, more powerful. But that's not what we want. So we're just gonna boom this. So we want to do one thing. It's always a good idea to set your objective before you start programming so you, think, so you don't get lost in the influx of things. If you notice, we're creating the aura no matter what. So if the aura ability tells us, yo, brother, deactivate the aura, we still create it. If it tells us, yo, activate the aura, we still create it. So we want to only activate it if it tells us to. So if activate, you know, I should name this, we should, wait, that's bad capping. We should. Okay, guys, never name anything like this, ever. It just makes it more fun. <laughs> okay, facts, face, facts, face. If activate R, then... So now we only activate the R if it tells us to. But if it tells us to... What does select do? But if it tells us to deactivate it, then we destroy the aura brutally. I mean, what? We just destroyed the aura for fun. But then we run into the problem. The aura is printed in the workspace. Two things. What if there's multiple auras? What if there's multiple people using auras? What if the aura, we can't find it? What happens then? There's so many questions. But it's an easy way to fix this problem of multiple auras. The first one is to be organized and create a folder. Mm, folders. You can tell how much I love folders. Okay, local folder. And then we print the folder to workspace. We name it something interesting like Super Epic Super R Super 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 Ability and then We just join it to the player name. So now when we load this, it would be super epic, super aura, super, 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 super ability, your name. So if my name is Phoenix for our, it to go. Then after this, Phoenix for our. But I'm just kidding, guys. Let's name this aura. No, let's reverse the roles, actually. So it makes sense. So it names this your name. Aura. So for me to go Phoenix for Aura, Aura. Now let's add some punctuation. I was in English class today. Learned some of those. So to go Phoenix for Aura's Aura. It's beautiful. Now instead of printing this to workspace, we just print this to the folder. And we're gonna test it to make sure it works. Particularly the beautiful naming system. So we're gonna open workspace, press E. Oh my God, look at that punctuation. It's beautiful. And if we see in Phoenix for hours R, we have our R. So now what we want to do is when we press E again, do that. It's very, very simple. In fact, it's so simple. First, we just get the folder we're looking for. And now each player now has their own unique R so it doesn't glitch out in us. So, player.name dot dot. Punctuation brings tears to my eyes. R. And then we destroy the folder. So, press E, 
Press E again. Hmm, a glitch. Attempt to call missing murder destroy. That's a joke, right? Okay, good, good. Okay, I thought they just depreciated destroy, but no, I just didn't name it. Okay, we don't just press the name and s we don't just put in the name and expect it to know what we're looking for. We have to find it. So now it's in workspace. Okay. So now it's in workspace, right? So we just check workspace. Look for the first thing called your name, Aura, and then delete that folder. We press E. E. Oh, it works. Oh, I have a two second cooldown. That's why. Okay, first thing I'm going to do, just so testing is a lot easier, change this to no so we can see it does work. Would you look at that? Now, there's one thing I want to quickly address. If this folder doesn't exist, the entire ability breaks. And the entire game, as a result, breaks. Maybe not the game, but the ability breaks. We don't want this. So we can just safeguard against this and go, if the folder doesn't exist, and do nothing. Beautiful. And now if you notice, as we activated and deactivated it, it had a clumpy effect. We don't want that. You want to know why? I'm a professional. You're a professional. We can do better than that, right? Yes, we can. So instead of destroying the folder, will we try something bizarre? It's a brand new idea. Totally. Where's my R at? Ctrl C. Ctrl V. You see this R? We grab all its children and disable it so it has that cool going away effect. Let's try that. Can we do it? I know we can. Okay, so this is easy. So first, we're just gonna look for the aura, local aura, equal to folder colon find first child. Aura. If Aura, then you know what? I'm really loving the safeguards today. If not Aura, then return and so now we're just looking for the Aura. If the Aura doesn't exist or has been named something else, then don't break our script, please, and do nothing. But if it does exist, then we loop through every child in this Aura. Find all the pot limiters and disable them. <laughs> okay, that sounded a bit <laughs> gruesome. For Ivy, <laughs> press Aura, go and get children. You know, I'm gonna get do get descendants in case you made your own Aura and you have been really fancy and added wait for it, attachments. So get the sentence. So now we're just gonna check if it's a particle emitter. Oh my god, I always spell them wrong. Particle emitter. No. You know, I believe this is right. Particle. P A R T I C L E E M I. I spelled it right, guys. Okay. Particle emitter. Then. V dot enabled equals false. Is it enabled or is it just enable? They all name something slightly different. Like this is called enabled. What is this called? Scripts, that's where we want to go. And this is called also enabled. I was very wrong, guys. They're all called enabled. <laughs> okay. If we then we just disable it. Are you ready, guys? It's almost showtime. It's moment of fruit. We did it, boys! Ada, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but if we noticed, if you noticed, 
the aura still exists. We just can't see it. So what we want to do is destroy the aura. But aura can destroy, of course. But what is this? Our effect didn't work. Why? Because it takes time for them to get disabled. So this just loops through all of them like in 0 0.0003 seconds, then it destroys the aura, which is not what we want. Because these things fade out in their lifetime. So if this one's lifetime is one, then we should destroy the aura in one second. But just for safety, just for safety, we'll destroy the aura in three seconds. You know what, let's destroy the entire folder in three seconds. Now we can do this by doing spawn function, wait five, folder, colon destroy, like what I used to do. Now this isn't wrong, but if you're like me, you don't like doing work. No, I'm kidding. If you're like me, you don't like doing extra unnecessary work. There's a different way to go about this. Wait for it. Debris! Yes. After a certain amount of seconds, the first parameter, it destroys the second parameter. Now let's test if this works. Guys, we're coming very, very, very close to the end of this. Oh. Game that the brief is the brief small letters. Oh, this folder doesn't exist. Attempt to call an instance value. I don't know what that means. Oh, I mistook the two. Okay, I was. I'm not sure if the brie is small. Okay, the brie is big. But the first parameter is actually the instance you're trying to destroy. And the second is the time it takes. And this is why regular texting is very important, guys. It's all part of the process. And if we press E, what is happening? Attempt to call an instance value. Oh my god. Okay, that's a my bad, guys. I was so excited I forgot the add item. So now it should destroy game to the brief colon add item folder command three. Remember guys, never stop learning. Even the pros make mistakes. Okay, enable. Oh my god, it works. Okay, let's see. And our folder just zipped us. It's gone. The folder no longer exists. And we can do this again. Oh. Oh. It ran into a problem. Yes, that is a problem, guys. If we have no cooldown on this, it spams it. So, what we want to do is safeguard against that. So we're just gonna see if the ability is already active, even though that should have done it. But you know what? It's fine. If it's because of what delaying the destruction. So if workspace clone find blah 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 blah, then return end. And this should be an activate R. So if we already have the folder created, then do nothing. Now I've never gotten this error before, but that should stop it from spamming it. So now I have zero cooldown in this. I'm gonna spam E. I'm spamming it so fast it doesn't work. Okay, now I'm not gonna spam E. Oh. Does it have a cooldown? Or am I just... E? 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 
и и и и и Okay, let's see what is happening. Hmm. So it's the lane before it destroys it. However, however, the ability is deactivated. So it's a paradox indeed. Now, honestly, let's do something I've never done before. Let's give these local full. Now, don't type anything yet until I'm done to make sure it works. Okay, you know what? Just cancel this all. Boom. And just add an actual cooldown. Boom. Done. You can't spam the ability unless the ability is deactivated now. Cooldown fixes everything. It's legendary. And like that, it works perfectly i hope you guys enjoyed wait 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 this isn't the end of the video because there's more there's a secret surprise bonus stick out for part two part three of this video in which we take it to the next level i hope you guys enjoyed i'll see you on the next one i love you guys bye